Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. I did some very, very minor repairs over here just to fill in some of the holes. Uh, not everything can be filled in, however, because a lot of these spaces need to be there because of the transfer pipes. But I at least filled that in. And I ran this stuff long enough to get all the chromium I need to convert all this stuff over to RF. It took a while. I mean, not really that much time, but it took a lot of resources. I had to make a lot of that blend. And it depleted my redstone from, I think, before making all the blends. I think I had over a thousand redstone, and now I've got 86. I thought I had enough redstone forever, but nope. So I'm very glad to be finally switching over. Um, so yeah, I just needed some chromium to make the nichrome. Nichrome is two chromium one iron, and six nickel, and that makes nine nichrom ingots. And I've got eight machines, so I needed this many to make all the heating elements. And then with that, we can make the induction heating interface. So let's plop that in and see how this stuff works. I hope this stuff doesn't try to draw too much power. I don't think it will. I think it'll be okay. Uh, yeah, so we just put that there, and then I think that just makes it accept RF. So, let's see. Damn. Ah, it's my transfer pipe. Alright, we'll see how that is. And there's probably going to be a couple that still won't connect. This is going to be fun. But yeah, let's just connect a couple and see how the power draw is. I'll hook this one up first. Should be okay now. There we go. Oh, yeah, wow, that already filled up. Yeah, these things don't actually take that much energy at all. They blow through this energized fuel blend, but the actual amount of power here, like 30,000 RF, that's nothing. Let's see how the rest of these do. As far as being able to connect. Oh, they actually all connected. Also, I forgot that I had to connect the metal alloy or two, but thankfully I had an extra connector. Oh, wait. Oh, right. <laughs> I have an extra connector, but, um... Yeah, I don't have the heating element for it. Oh, well. It's perfectly fine. I don't use this thing very much, and once I do use it, I'm sure I'll have enough chromium. So this thing should just be purring along, doing great. Everything should be full of energy. No problem. Yeah, looking great. Yeah, look at all the stuff we have now. Got some really strange stuff. Scandium. Yttrium. Iron dust. What even is that? Boron? Manganese. Can make BAM! What do you do with BAM? can turn it into a BAM ingot, and then you can crush it back down into BAM dust, and then you can turn it back into a BAM ingot. It's so good. Anyway, so I'm just going to let that do its thing. Uh, one question I do have about it that I don't know the answer to is, do these things fill up? And if they do, what happens? Does it just... I mean, I guess it would just stop, right? So I might need to extract from this thing. But if you extract, does it just extract every single dust? Hopefully you wouldn't need like a filter for each one or something. I don't know. I'm just going to leave it for now and we'll just see if this thing ends up stopping at some point. Hopefully it's not a problem. I mean, it must have some limit. It can't it can't be unlimited. But as long as it's large enough, it shouldn't be a problem. I mean, I mean the only ones that are going to fill up are some of the more common ones like iron, copper, maybe sulfur. But other than that, the rest aren't that numerous. And some of these seem really rare. Like, these ones up here that have the different colors, I'm guessing that's kind of the rarer ones, because they're the ones I seem to have less of. I wonder what all this stuff is. Se, du, er, u, good. I'm such a scientist. Anyway, um, let me think of what I want to do next. I've got a couple things. I've got two kind of big projects in mind. Alright, so I think the project I'm going to do next is I want to expand my industrial center. 
What the hell? Are they up in the trees or something? Oh no. Hello. Yeah, I want to expand my industrial center. I was making some stuff down here. <laughs> that was a delayed hurt. So I made this stuff for another crusher, and the purpose of that is for making gravel. I figured I should have one for gravel and maybe some extra stuff, because the crusher's not very fast, and if I want to mass produce gravel to turn into the uninspected mineral, I'm probably going to want a crusher dedicated to that, or at least just, maybe not just gravel, but at least not the one that I use for general stuff, for ores and things like that. Um, I also want to try out making an assembler. That's a immersive engineering multi-block structure. It's basically like an autocrafter, except it's a bit fancier than a normal one. I've never used it before, by the way, but uh, apparently it's able to take in liquids and it'll actually do crafting with the liquids without having to use buckets. So that can make some things a lot easier. And the reason I made the assembler is because I was getting all the stuff together for the art furnace and I have all of it. It was very expensive. Heck, it uses six steel blocks alone. Um, I got everything together except one thing. Was it blast furnace? Uh, blast brick? Yeah. So it needs reinforced blast brick. Which requires... Mm, Kamenite, non-conductive steel plates, or tiny plates, blah blah blah, and the non-conductive tiny plates require obsidian. And obsidian's pretty annoying to get. I mean, it wouldn't be that hard just to go get some obsidian, but it's kind of a problem I just need to solve. I need to make obsidian. I need to automate it somehow. And if you look at the recipes for obsidian, there's not too many of them, really. So you can make it from UU matter. Uh, that's not happening. It's, I think that's some late game industrial craft 2 thing. You can also make it with a bunch of lava and a bunch of water. And I think this is how I'm going to try to make it. It's annoying to do this by hand, but if I can set up the assembler to do it, which I should be able to, because it can take it, it has three, I believe three tanks for liquids. So I can just fill one with water and the other with lava. And it should be able to autocraft me obsidian. Uh, there's some other things that also just requires lava and water and I don't know, blaze lamp, which requires blaze rods and a compressor, which I would need like a mob spawner for. Yeah, I think this is the most straightforward way, is to use an assembler and just get lava and water. Now, getting the water, pretty easy, right? I've already done it before. You can, using the aqueous accumulators, very simple, but getting the lava is a whole different matter. So the way I'm going to try to make lava is using the magma crucible. Yeah, so the Magma Crucible uses RF power to generate lava. Uh, I think it takes in cobblestone as well. So it takes in cobblestone and uses the RF power to melt it down, basically. Now the thing is, I'm pretty sure it's going to take a lot of power. It takes a lot of power to make lava, I'm pretty sure. So we might run into power problems. We'll see. But I'm probably going to be making quite a few thermal expansion stuff in the future. And they all require machine frames, so I'm just going to go ahead and make four machine frames right now. Steel, electrum gear, redstone glass. Redstone glass is something I haven't made before, but uh, it wasn't too bad. Basically, just thickened glass in the resonator, and thickened glass is sandy glass that's been cooked into thickened glass. And sandy glass is just glass plus sand. Just a bunch of sand and glass, and you just, yeah, put it through a bunch of stuff, and then finally you end up with redstone glass. So let's make four machine frames. And with all these other things, Invar gear, nether bricks. This stuff's pretty easy. Some red quartz, fluxed electrum ingot. That was another weird thing, but um, it's not too hard to make. It's just fluxed electrum blend, which is just a little bit of electrum and a bunch of redstone. Pretty simple. So there's a magma crucible. I'm sure I'll be using those machine frames later. Ah, yes. Uh, I'm also going to try to upgrade it. So you see it says Magma Crucible Basic. So there's... Well, let's take a look. Thermal Expansion. So from Basic, you can go to Hardened, Reinforced, Signalum, and Resonant. I don't know if upgrading it alone will make it faster and better. 
But one thing it definitely does do is allows you to put in more speed upgrades and things like that. These are all just various upgrades and augments and things like that that can make it perform faster. So I'm not sure if this alone will do anything. It might just allow me to put in more other stuff. We'll see, but it won't hurt. Some iron, invar, tin electron tube, which was just in the thermionic fabricator. Which is just tin and redstone. And I think... I'm going to want a pretty big buffer for the lava. Because in my experience using the magma crucible, aside from just taking up a lot of power, it's also generally quite slow. So I'm going to want a big buffer, so if I need a bunch of obsidian, I have a lot of lava to use to draw from. And I don't have to just wait ages for it. And the best way to do that is to make a fluid tank. So I can either use this fluid tank, or make another one. I think I'll make another one, because I did want this to be water. Yeah. In fact, I could probably put it right here. One, two, three. Uh. Eh. If I put it right up against this one, it could fit. Well, I'm going to have to make more room anyway for the extra industrial stuff, so maybe I'll just put it over there. Anyway, let me get to work expanding this platform to make enough room for all the extra things I'm going to build, and I'll be right back. You know, I've been using this just iron chisel to chisel all my stuff, but there's actually better versions. There's actually two better versions. There's the diamond chisel, which compared to the normal chisel, it says it has multiple chiseling modes. I'm not sure what that means. And then there's also the eye chisel, which apparently doesn't have multiple chiseling modes. Is it an upgrade? I used this thing once very briefly, and I think it gives you a kind of visual display of what the block's going to look like in various shapes. Can be kind of helpful. I don't know if I've ever made this, though. Let's, let's see what's different. So this is the normal one. Put it in there, select what you want. That's pretty much it. Okay, that looks the same. What are the different chiseling modes, then? Huh. Don't know. Let's turn it into an eye chisel. Oh, you know what? Huh. I think it ate the cobblestone I had in it. Not that I care, but just worth mentioning, if you have a material stored inside of a chisel and you upgrade it, it looks like it just eats it. Unless it's still in there? Nah, it's not. Oh. Oh, this one doesn't actually store the block inside of it. It chisels it directly in your inventory, and it looks like... Oh. Huh. Huh. Hi. Chain boots. I've just been... Yep, yeah, most of my armor. Actually, by the looks of it, all of it broke, except for these little bits and pieces that I just get from enemies sometimes. I should probably make some more. I have, like, no armor. Anyway, yeah, so you can just click to directly chisel that one stack, or if you hold down shift, it looks like you can chisel all. So... Yeah, hold down shift and then press chisel all. Oh, it doesn't make the chisel sound. I'm sad. But anyway, yeah, it gives you a little 3D display showing you how it looks, which is actually pretty helpful, because some of these things, it's hard to tell how they look without seeing them kind of in a bigger view like this, because of the whole connected texture thing. And you can change it to some other types, too. But I think the panel's probably the best. You can have it. <laughs> Just slowly spin it. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, that one looks nice. I like that. Yeah, this thing's sweet. I should have made this a long time ago. Alright, so I'm going to put the other platform just right here. Um, I think it's going to be on the same level. I'll just continue this platform, but with a different material. Clear out some of this dirt here. 
Yeah, I don't need a huge amount of room for what I'm going to build, but a decent amount. Maybe half the size of, of that thing there. There we go. Got a nice platform over here. And my jetpack just ran out of power. Gonna connect it with a walkway here, and I'm gonna continue this same walkway pattern into it once I've built the machines. Once I know where they are, I'll know where the pathway goes. And then I'll probably end up actually putting the pathway in five episodes in the future when I remember to. So look forward to that one. You know, I don't know why, but every once in a while when I log in, I end up with an extra quest book. And also, my quest progress keeps resetting. Once again, it's back to like, you've done nothing. Ah. <sighs> Quest book is such a pain. There we go, so I think that's where I'm gonna put the lava. Let's test this magma crucible out. I just wanna see how much power it draws and how fast it works. So I've just set up a wooden post over here to run the power over there. Alright, let's try this thing out. All right, let's get in power. Let's throw in some cobblestone and see how long that's going to take and how much it's going to produce. I don't think it's going to produce a full bucket once that's done. Looks like the power usage is actually going up with time. Maximum power 50 RF per tick. Yeah, 50 per RF per tick is not too bad. That's not an excessive number. This isn't going to, like wreck my power system. Oh, that going up wasn't the... Oh, no. That going up wasn't the completion. That was the temperature rising. This is the completion. That... Oh, man. Look at how slow that is. This is why I wanted to make a huge tank. I want to build a buffer of this. Let's see. Does it say how much it makes? It should. Oh, what can we make in this thing? We can melt ender pearls. Destabilize redstone? Zephyrian, Orothium, Gelid Cryothium, Blazing Pyrothium, Energized Glowstone. Okay, well the good thing is, is once it's done, it will produce a bucket of lava just from one cobblestone. Netherrack. It doesn't say how long it takes. I'm assuming Netherrack and all these other take the same amount of time. Snow into water. Ice into water. Tectonic Petrothium. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, that's extraordinarily slow. So, let's try upgrading this thing. Boop. Alright. Um... Hmm, okay, so even without putting a speed upgrade in it, it will actually go faster, because the maximum power went up from 50 RF per tick to 75, which means it's, you can see it's heating up more, which means surely it's going to cook it faster. It's also got a larger temperature buffer. Yeah, 75 RF per tick, that's, that's a pretty big drain on my power system. I really do need to upgrade my power system, not the power generation, but just the power transmission, because remember, my lines are limited to 256 RF per tick. So this thing alone is like, what, one-third, one-fourth of my power system's power? That's a lot. Alright, so I'm gonna let that do its thing. Keep in mind, we're gonna have to melt twice. We're gonna have to do this process twice to make two buckets of lava to make one obsidian. Yeah. Man, that... I'm glad I'm doing this now when I don't really, like, super need obsidian. Okay. Well, I'm gonna hook this up to the fluid tank. Alright, we got one bucket of lava. Now, I shouldn't need a pump or anything like that, because I believe that device outputs it on its own, so this should go into it. Aha! It did! You can see the one pixel of lava. This great fluid tank has one five hundred and twelfths of a tank of fluid. <laughs> cool. Alright, well now that that's done, let's set up 
something else. So what do we have? We have the Crusher and the Assembler. Well, let's do the Assembler, because I've never done that before. Where's the book? There you are. Alright, let's see how this thing's made. Let's see, where is it? Probably construction? No, that's where I just was. Tools and simple machines. Assembler. There we go. So, 3x3 three three on the ground. Okay. Stop. Oh, this thing looks really cool. Look at that. I always forget what combination of buttons you need to press to make it show you the layers without moving. Aha! Got it. Iron sheet metal, redstone, engineering. Sheet metal, engineering, redstone. Let's put it... Here. It's okay, right? Yeah, it's not too cramped. And what was it? These? And was that a light engineering block? I don't think I have a heavy, do I? No. Okay. That'll be a light one. Oh, I should pay attention to what direction this is going to be. I guess it depends on probably the way you put the conveyor belt or belts. So it's going to go in either this direction or this direction. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I think I'll have it go this direction. Next layer, bunch of sheet metal. And then the other engineering block. And then some more sheet metal. Oh, those are slabs, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, slabs. Okay. So these are slabs. Oh, I'm missing the conveyor belt. Or belts, how many? Two conveyor belts, okay. So let's have these face that direction. And that should be it. Let's give it a good whack. Whack, whack, whack. Something's wrong. Oh, there we go. Huh, I, I think I just needed to hit it in the conveyor belt. Odd. Yeah, this thing is really cool looking. Alright, so power goes in up there. And looks like there's a... Fluid input? Looks like there's just one input, I think. Unless these are also inputs. They don't look like it though. Anyway, let's take a look. Non-recursive use of ingredients. So yeah, they will do the steps in order. So if you wanted to do something and then if the second recipe needed some part, you know, needed the result of the first, you could have it recursively use stuff. These the fluid tanks. That's probably the, oh, that's the RF. Fluid, recipes, inventory of items. Okay. How much lava do we have? I wish I'd actually told you exactly how many buckets you had. Can't tell. I'm assuming somewhere between two and four, I'm sure. Can't have made too much. Well, let me pump the lava in. And also, actually, before that, I should probably start producing water in this tank, huh? Yeah, let me get an aqueous accumulator. Alright, let's plop an aqueous accumulator down right here. Should be working. Yep. Let's hook it up. And in just a second, should see some water. <coughs> hmm. 
it's not going out. Oh, there it is. Whoop. Okay, it went in. Why is this so slow, though? I don't understand why it's so slow. It's not pumping out nearly as fast as it possibly could. There we go. Put a pump in place, hooked it up with power, covered the water, and chiseled it a bit so it doesn't look so weird. Now, when I flip this lever, it should fill up very fast. I see it going up, up, up. I think it's working. Let's find out for sure. Okay, yeah. Yep, much, much faster. Interesting, so it might be that these machines, if you output to something that isn't sucking like this, this fluid pipe, um, it looks like it maybe gives it some pressure, a certain amount of pressure just from the machine itself. But not very much, not nearly as much as you'd get with something like a pump. I'm guessing that's what's happening. I'm not sure if it's just the aqueous accumulator or if that's kind of the case for all of the thermal expansion stuff. This one seems to be fine, but that's most likely just because it produces stuff so slowly that there's no way that it can, you know, suck it up too slowly. Oh, also I realized you can see how much lava we've made by looking at how much cobblestone there is. So I've made eight buckets of lava. Woohoo, I can make four obsidian. Just want to watch it go up and up. <laughs> Every bucket. Little, little tiny bit. Another pixel. Okay, so now I want to make the recipe for obsidian in this thing, and I also want to pump in the lava and the water. Now, the lava would be super easy, right? I could just pump it from here to over there, but the water is a bit further. So I got to think about infrastructure here. I don't want just huge pipes snaking all over the place on the ground. So I could go in the air, or I could go underground. I think I like underground more, so I think I'm going to dig a bit of a hole. I'm thinking something like this. So I'm going to have an entrance, and probably many more entrances across my base that go down to the service tunnels. And I need to put some torches and stuff, but service tunnels will be something like this. I could always expand it if it needs to be bigger. Uh, but I'm thinking this will be where I run a bunch of lines across the base. And right now I've got a hole here that goes directly underneath the water. So this will be filled in, and this won't be the entrance, of course. This will be filled in, I'll just get the water directly, and then anytime I want to go mess with the surface tunnel, I can just go into an entrance such as this. Yeah, I'm thinking something like that. And let me keep working on it. There we go. Ran the pipe all the way around here, and then it comes up right behind where it needs to be. Alright, so that should fill it with water in one of the tanks, right? Hmm, I thought that maybe be instant. I wonder if you need to tell it that it needs water. Like, maybe I need a recipe that needs water before it will fill up a tank. Alright, gave it power. Don't think that did anything. No. Okay, so let's give it a recipe. Don't remember which one goes on top. Alright, water on top, lava on the bottom. Alright, it's got a recipe. Now... Why... is this not filling up? Aha! It pays to read the manual. It does indeed output through the bottom automatically, however... To do that, it needs a redstone signal. So, loop. Huh. 
Haha, <laughs> there you go. Super fast. Oh, that is beautiful. Yeah, look at that. Alright, well, it's got everything it needs, so... Um... Why isn't it making obsidian? It's got power, it's got lava, it's got water. Alright, I've got a hunch on what's wrong. I think it might actually require buckets in the inventory. And then I think it might fill those buckets with what's here, and then use them in the recipe. I'd thought about that, but I just the way they worded it made it sound like that wasn't needed. Yeah, it says, fluid in these tanks can be used to replace fluid containers like water buckets in recipes. Replace the fluid containers. Makes it sound like it doesn't need the actual buckets. But, let's try this. No, it still doesn't work. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, I, I don't get it. I think there must be a bug somewhere. Maybe something in the recipe for obsidian is, for some reason, upsetting the assembler. Because this thing does work. I just made a simple recipe for making compressed cobblestone. Toss it in, and there it goes. So, it works. But that does not. That's really disappointing. I'm not sure what to do. I really wanted this to work, and I have no idea how to do this a better way. This seemed like the way. I wonder if it has a problem with a recipe that is entirely made from just liquids and has no actual, like, item. Let me check something. I think just one. Okay. No, so that works. You can see that's going for it. One water becomes fresh water. I just produced a bunch of fresh water. So it's perfectly fine with recipes that are only liquids and don't involve any real items. It just doesn't like that. <laughs> Why not? Can I do it the opposite way? Sure, but that doesn't matter. Does it even have to be shaped? Can I just put it wherever? Yeah, put it wherever and it still doesn't work. Crap. Okay, so going with the idea that there's something weird about this recipe for obsidian, I'm going to try making my own recipe, and there's various ways to do that. I'm going to try one. Uh, I think this is a mod called Mine, Mine Tweaker um, Recipe Maker. So this opens up a GUI. Let me try telling it just explicitly. Lava, lava, water, water, equals one obsidian. I don't know, there's all sorts of special things here, but let's just leave that all at default. Just this simple. Okay. Save changes. Okay. Okay. Oh. I think it just reloaded the uh, the scripts for the recipes. Oh, it looks like it's still... There we go. <laughs> I think I just saved like 20 times. Alright, we're good now. Please, please, please let this work. Still doesn't work. Okay, well, you know what? Actually, maybe it's conflicting. Maybe it's conflicting with the other recipe because it's kind of like the same thing. So let's just do something like really weird. Like, let's say if you specifically put them in this order. Okay, how about, <laughs> how about this? If you specifically put them in this order and put a piece of cobblestone in the center This is per slot, right? Editing slot 5, 1... Okay, so let's say it was slot 5. Let's say slot 5 is going to be uh, reuse. That means it won't actually use up the item. Which means, theoretically, I should be able to put... 
reset for some reason. Um, I should be able to put one piece of cobblestone in the machine, and then it should be good to go. Just kind of a dummy thing. Lava, water, cobblestone. Okay. So let's just give it a second. It's probably saving. I really hope this works. So, lava, lava, water, water. Okay, so the recipe's showing up. Good. So now, one piece. <laughs> oh my god, I think it just worked! <laughs> yes! Oh my god, I'm so happy! I can't believe I just fixed that. I don't know what was up with the original recipe, but this works. Um... Wait a minute, though. It consumed the cobblestone, didn't it? It wasn't supposed to. Huh. Yeah, it's not supposed to consume the cobblestone. Did I do something wrong with that? Let's try it again. Slot two, slot three. Oh. Oh, the button selects the slot. I thought this was like an X button. I thought it would just remove whatever was in it. Give back? No return? I thought reuse would do what I wanted it to do. Ah, still uses it. I mean, that's not that big of a deal. Feeding this thing a bunch of cobblestone? I mean, sure. It's not like that's a problem. But I must be doing something wrong. Let me mess around a bit. Okay, let's try this. So I, instead of doing reuse, I selected give back, and then I put a piece of cobblestone here. All right, let's pray this works. It doesn't. Eh, oh well, it's not a big problem. I'll just set up a, you know, a, a drawer that just has a ton of cobblestone. No big deal. I'm just freaking happy this works. All right, let's see how much lava we can make. I mean, obsidian. Ten pieces, huh? Yep, that's all the lava. So the entire time I spent working on all that stuff, this thing was only able to produce... What, like 20? Yeah, 20 buckets of lava. Because it takes two buckets to make one obsidian. <laughs> it is very slow, but it is automated. Sweet. Here, have some more cobblestone. This will be enough to last at about 5 million years. I'm so happy with that. Okay, let's make the crusher and the arc furnace. I don't know how big the arc furnace is exactly. I think it's quite large, so I don't know if there's enough room here for both. Let's take a quick look. Heavy machinery. Arc furnace. Holy crap, that is big. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's five by five. Yep, that's big. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe I'll put the crusher here. Like the crusher here. And an arc furnace in the corner. I think that might be okay. Alright, well, I'm gonna try to get this stuff together for the- what the hell? Oh, it's just a rendering bug. It's- it's actually there. I thought maybe it'd blown up or something. Uh, yeah, let me get the stuff for the arc furnace together, because I gotta do a bit of work making those non-conductive tiny plates, and I think I gotta make some more Kamenite stuff, too. Um, for some reason, a bit of rotten flesh got stuck in the transfer node for these bloomeries. Oh, a while ago there was a zombie stuck on the conveyor belt right here and I killed it. Its flesh must have went onto the conveyor belt and gone in here. <laughs> get out of there. Stinking up the place. Um, yeah, so I'm actually going to have to go get more iron. I'm actually running low on iron. I've been using so much of it. 
I'm going to need, I think, a couple stacks. So if you look at the blast brick, I'm going to need to make like 28 of these because I've got to make a bunch of these for... Oh, wait a, wait a second. I'm going to need a bunch of these for the arc furnace, but I was thinking I was making a blast furnace. I don't think I need 27. How many do I need? Oh, no, never mind. I need 27. Yep, it's got a whole blast furnace inside of it. Yeah, so for 27 blast furnace bricks, uh, I can only craft 28 since you... Oh, no, never mind. Sorry, I was thinking of the old recipe where you craft, like, four blast bricks at the same time or something like that. I can craft exactly 27, but each one of them is going to take four iron plates. So 27 times four, that's, like, two stacks of iron just in the iron plates alone. And I only have, like, maybe a stack and a half. Yeah, 83. So... I'm gonna go do some mining. All right, I've got everything made. Finished the reinforced blast bricks, which took a lot of materials, my god. I'm seriously running low on a bunch of stuff. But anyway, now we've got everything we need to make the arc furnace. Got everything in this list. You can see all those check marks, it means you're good to go. This thing is expensive and big, and I've never built it before, by the way. I've used immersive engineering quite a bit, but I just never really ever needed to make an arc furnace. So this is my first time, it's big, it's going to take a while, but I want to show you every step so you can savor the anticipation just as I do. So the design of this is kind of complicated. Let's see which way this is going to face, by the way. This is the front, right? What does it look like finished? Oh, that is cool. Yeah, that's the front. So Cauldron is kind of like the front panel. Okay. We're going to use a lot of that. A bunch of that. And a piece of that. So... Which way do I want it to face? Do I want it to face this way? This is the front. Or this is the front. I think this should be the front. One, two... One, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah, that'll be good. It'll be one from the edge on all sides. Don't want it to be too cramped. Now, I think it's like that. A little bit more here, and another one there. And then this is that. Yep. That goes there, that goes there. Okay, and the back pieces are... So those look like steel blocks. Those are steel blocks, and this is steel... Um, sheet metal. So blocks and sheet metal. Blocks. Sheet metal. Oh, and that back there is... Mm, what type of engineering is that? Is that the heavy or the light? They look like almost the same. I can't tell. The light is the colorful kind, right? Yeah, so the grayer kind, which is what it was, is that. It's the heavy. Okay, layer one, down. It's getting nighttime. Layer 2. Redstone Engineering. Reinforced Coke. Wait. Is that right? Does it float? Oh, yeah, it does float. Block, block. And then heavy on the side. Light in the back. Block, block. Heavy on the side. Light in the back. Yep. Oh, 
Alright, so the blocks just keep going up as like posts, the steel blocks. And this moves up and also extends forwards. Man, it's getting creepy dark. Let me just set it to day real fast. I'm too into this, I don't want to go sleep. Yep, and then we got light in the back and then two steel sheet metals. On the posts. It's taking shape. Okay, so this pulls back one. It's a three by three that should use up the last of this. And what was this? Continued light? Oh, just one, and then the steel scaffold. I think it's almost done. Yep, just one more level. We just gotta put, um, looks like a penis on top. Two scaffolding, and three in the ceiling. Alright. I think that's it. <laughs> this thing is so expensive. Now let's see where we gotta whack it. Aha! Aha! It's my first dark furnace. Beautiful. So, what are the uses for this thing? Well, I know one thing it can do is it can smelt metals extraordinarily fast. I think it's only for smelting metals. I don't think it works for general stuff. But for metals, it can do it extraordinarily fast. It can hold, um, I think this is the storage for metals, and it can do all these at the same time. So that's 12? I think it can smelt 12 metals at the same time? Which is super fast, but I think there's also some things that may require the arc furnace. Like, I don't think it's just... fast. Uh... I can't really find it this way. I'm not sure how to see exactly what you need to make in it. But yes, I'm pretty sure it's required for certain things. And you know the best thing about it? I can't even use it. <laughs> All that anticipation. And it won't work. Not in its current form. Aside from obviously needing to be hooked up with power. It also is missing something here. You see there's three, like, slots doesn't have anything in there. It needs electrodes. Graphite electrodes. Which need either a metal press or an engineer's workbench with a blueprint. But regardless of which way you do that, you still need hop graphite ingots. And to get hop, hop graphite ingots, you need the graphite dust. And to get the graphite dust, you need... <laughs> Uh, you need to put coke dust in either a compressor or an industrial squeezer. Compressor would obviously be the easier way, since I already have one, and industrial squeezer would be a whole new immersive engineering thing. Although I do believe I disconnected all of my EU stuff. Let me go check real quick. I'm pretty sure I did. Power issues again. Yeah, I disconnected pretty much all of it. Because it was I was having power issues again, and then and this extractor here that I needed for all this stuff was not even getting any power at all and wasn't doing anything. So yeah. I could make the industrial squeezer. Or I could stop being allergic to EU and actually finally upgrade the power system for EU. Maybe I should do that. Um, either way, I think I'm going to end this episode here. It's getting pretty late. As much as I'd like to finish that and set up the crusher, I think I'm going to save that for later. I see you. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I might upgrade my EU power system. I'll probably do that, at least so I can get the compressor and stuff working fine without any issues. Get the arc furnace up and going, get the crusher up and going. I'll do the crusher off camera because, you know, you've already seen it. 
And then after that, I'm not quite sure. <laughs>